In this session, we're going to discuss what makes a good primary key. Now, I have a simple database here with students in one table and courses in another table. So one student can have many courses and a course can be taken by many students. So at the moment, there's a relationship of many to many. And we'll need to resolve that in a later video. But to start with, we want to talk about what primary key should we choose. So let's talk about students first of all. Now students, we know they're in a school or a university or even in any business, you can actually have lots of students. We don't know how many they're going to be in a year. We know what the maximum students at a school could have, but one year their numbers could be down, the next year the numbers could be up, every year there could be you know, 20 students coming to the school, could be 360 students coming to the school. So it's very, very hard to actually uniquely identify them. Using things such as first name, last name, or a combination of first name, last name, won't give us a unique ID either because we could have two Jim Smiths or something like that. So it's a good idea to actually come up with a unique identifier to identify each student. Now in Australia, we could actually have something like a SACE number or an educational number given out by the government departments, much the same as like tax file numbers and driver's license numbers. And there is an educational number that they use, but students may not like these numbers and therefore the school may look at using a numbering system that uniquely identifies them. I've chosen in my database to use an auto number. So the first student enrolled in the school will be number one and every year it will increment. But what distinguishes, you know, this is a good primary key is the fact that it's always gonna go up and we won't be allowed to have duplicates. I've also used a naming convention where I've got student underscore ID. This is a little bit different to photo ID. You notice down here, photo ID is an object so we can actually put the photos of the students in. But the aim of this photo ID is actually a picture where this one here has underscore ID, which I will use as an indicator for foreign keys or Canada keys. And I will always use underscores ID for my primary keys, which uniquely identifies each record in a table. Now, when we look at table courses, you notice I've got course ID. I have an example here. I've come up with my own coding system. So I've got Y11 for year 11, IPT 2019, or English, if it was an English class, this could be something like Y10 ENG for English 2020. So I've got the year level, the course title in three letters. So um, you could work out a new one for engineering and subjects like that. And I've got 2020. I've used a short text field at the moment. It's only 10 characters long. And I've created and filled the full 10. I got the year plus I have IPT, the subject, and the year level that the course is for. So it gives you a lot of information in the primary key, and the primary key makes sense, rather than an auto number just being incremental. So when you're looking for primary keys and creating primary keys, make sure that they're a good field size, make sure they're identifiable. Try to give them context for the table. And once again, you notice I've got course underscore ID, which means this is actually a primary key. And, and if I was using any other IDs in the table, they wouldn't have the underscore in there. I've also got max underscore student and min underscore. This way I'm giving the field names context and meaning without just going min max. As a programmer, when you're programming these or writing SQL for your databases, it's better if they actually have context rather the min max. Now what uniquely identifies this field from any other field in the table? Well the first thing is you notice there is a little key here. This key can be turned on and off up here. So the key's been removed. You notice how it's got index no. When I turn the key on you notice now the index is turned to yes no duplicates. So this field here actually controls our primary keys. So Index means no, which means we don't load it into memory, where if it is indexed, we take this field and load it into memory. And that's important, you don't want everything indexed, where you go yes to index and duplicates okay. Because if you think of something like the Australian tax file numbers, where there's you know 25 million people, which is nothing like compared to America, but if you took 25 million tax file numbers and loaded them into a computer's memory, it would take up a lot of space. So what makes it a primary key is this one here. Index, yes, no duplicates. So it means index, yes, because it's gonna be in the computer's memory and it's gonna be one of the major fields that we search. And no duplicate means they must be unique. So I can't have two student number fours or two students number 13. 
So that is very important. Access uses the little key up the top to give you a visual representation. So when we look at courses, you can see this is true as well. Course ID has the key. Index, yes, no duplicates, which means we can't have more than one of them in the database. And that's another reason for having the year as well, so we can increment that from year to year. So you want to keep your primary keys field names as discrete as possible, as unique as possible, and also give them appropriate data types that have meaning when you store data in them for any programmer or any user looking at them. So if I had a products table, I might have product ID. I still might use short text and say if I'm doing a hardware store, I might have a six character one, which might be HAM, which might be short for hammer, 001 for the first type of hammer. Now if I've got a second type of hammer in the store, I could have HAM002. So not only am I using a sequential incremental number to uniquely identify each product, but I've also got a char in there to uniquely identify as HAM for hammer. So I hope this helps you identify and create primary keys for your databases.